Here is a 2024 Honda CRV Sport Hybrid in urban gray over black interior. This year we get a new Sport L Hybrid, which is just underneath the Sport Touring Hybrid. And it's above the EXL Hybrid, which was the sweet spot for 23 for the full refresh. Is the Sport trim now the option to go to, or should you look at the Sport L Hybrid? I'm gonna go over some of the different specs that you'll get with this trim compared to others, and some of the comparable rivals. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and right off the bat, all-wheel drive is gonna be 5941 weight distribution. LED headlights and daytime runnings. The gloss black elements is going to surround the enlarge grill, it's more sleek, it's a more wide fascia, and they carry on on the lower portion of the bumper. Active grill shutter is also standard. What else do you get with the sport trim? You're going to get these 18 inch multi-spoke gloss black wheels, the side view mirror caps, the roof rails, the side fenders will be in the matte black and also the rockers, which here I kind of wish that they would have thrown that into the sport trim, especially with this urban gray. The sport trim is the base trim for the hybrid. Clearance starts at 7.8 inches going up to 8.2 because this is the all wheel drive. Underneath the hood houses a inline four cylinder hybrid producing a combined net horsepower at 204 and 247 pound feet of torque paired to the eCVT transmission. And what does that mean? It doesn't have automatic gears to switch. So if you're looking for a automatic transmission, you're not going to be able to get that paired with Honda, achieving 40 MPGs for the city, 37 MPGs for the highway. And when you're considering an all-wheel drive vehicle, this is sipping fuel. Towing decreases to 1,000 pounds when you go to the hybrid. There hasn't been any change there. 1,500 pounds for the turbo variant non-hybrids. And a curb weight at 3,869 pounds. Matte black on the lower roof spoiler. The traditional vertical LED taillights. In what Honda also gives is LED turn signals that's on the side view mirror. So when you're thinking about safety, well, when you get into this trim, you're going to receive rear cross traffic alert and blind spot. You will have to check on the sticker because if it has BD, then it doesn't have that. It is a delete. The lower is going to get the matte black with chrome exhaust tips. Because it's a hybrid, I'm good either way, but I like because it's a sport trim that they add this so it gives more of that athletic look with the grill pattern. The EXL hybrid will add a power lift gate Cargo is going to start at 39.3 cubic feet. We will not get any storage underneath here, but you get a couple of nooks on the side with some bag holders, LED lighting with a 12 volt. If you're tall, you can split fold these, but you're going to notice it takes a little bit of work. This can be detached so it'll stay up in the air. I left it there so you can see how it looks on the interior. And when you finally fold it down at that 60-40 split, and that will max cargo to 76.5 cubic feet. The opening is easy enough because the bumper doesn't extend outwards. Let's go inside, move around this hybrid so you can hear that exhaust. Ten-way power seat adjustment is going to start off with the sport trim. Heated front seats. We get the orange contrast stitching. Headroom and leg room. Because of the refresh, it is a wider interior. The center cluster gets ambient lighting. If you want ambient lighting to go into the door pocket in the footwell, you have to go to the sport touring. The dashboard starts off with the aluminum look that's going to brush underneath the honeycomb air vents. It's going to be a flat dashboard, standard 7-inch touchscreen with AM, FM, Bluetooth audio, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, 240-watt six-speaker sound system. If you want more sound, you have to go to the EXL Hybrid, which will give you 320 watts and eight speakers, also adding HD radio and Sirius XM. Put it into reverse, and we got a reverse camera 
the trajectory expands out and you can change the different looks and to line it up for your towing. Seven inch digital reader for the gauge cluster that can be configured and you can change the display layout. Leather wrap steering wheel, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist. You get the orange contrast stitching and the paddle shifts. Dual climate control settings is standard. If you want a wireless charging pad, you have to go up to the EXL. USB ports, 12 volt leather around the shifter with the contrast stitching in orange. Four different driving modes select when you get into the hybrid. Otherwise, non-hybrids is only three modes. The key fob for the CRV hybrid. It's going to be a little bit more sporty with the contrast stitching opening up. It's a deep storage pocket and it's pretty wide. Non-auto dimming rear view mirror, it's manual. You gotta go up to the EXL moonroof with one push open and close. The door panel will get that aluminum look. It's gonna be everyday materials, software. It needs to be one touch up and down just for the front windows. The EXL will give you the one touch up and down for all the windows. Storage pocket, you can fit a couple of beverages. Headroom for the back, and this is reclined. So we're going to put this up so you can see also this way. And it's still pretty good. It's kind of carved out right into here and you can also see it on this side. Leg space is also pretty good. No storage behind the driver's seat, only behind the passenger seat air vents, USB ports, armrests with cup holders, and the door is going to have the same materials that's found in the front. It's gonna be soft to touch with that contrast stitching in about the same size storage pocket. Sliding into the center, the floor is almost flat. Because this comes back a little bit, it's going to be a little bit more of sharing a little bit of feet space. Button shoulder space is also pretty good because it's a wider vehicle and headroom for the center. As long as you're behind the LED interior lights, there is no problem. Like I was saying on the exterior, I left this to show you that if you have it plugged in, it's always going to be on the shoulders, whether you sit in the center or behind the driver. 204 horsepower, 247 pound feet of torque. You still have to go up the tiers in order to get all of the features. The Sport L Hybrid is almost the sweet spot. I would say the XLE is still going to be the sweet spot when it comes to this. If you do not want to option every single feature going to the Sport Touring. When you're in the Sport Hybrid, it's still going to be decent in the sense of amenities that you're getting in the interior. You're getting standard power seat adjustments and dual climate control and heated front seats. So I like that they're giving you some of this and everything's LED on the exterior. I would have liked to see them increase the towing, but because this is the second year from a refresh, you're not really expecting to see major changes. So to see a new trim line, that shows that they are trying to go in the right department to give more amenities. We're gonna stop here to show you some of the performance. There we go. You'll hear the engine filter in, kind of has a little bit of a peppy noise. When you change the driving modes to Econ, you will feel a huge difference as soon as you put it into normal or sport. It just changed the ratio of the eCVT transmission. The B-roll for the paddle shifters, you have quite a few options here, in which this is all the way, I would say mid-grade, and this is basically nothing. So depending on your daily use of drive, this is something that you might want to play with. 18 inch wheels, it just glides. They retuned the suspension, the seating, it's comfortable, it's long enough for the leg area so you wouldn't even need cushion extensions, which they don't offer it. Toyotas, they're a little bit more smaller for the butt area. For the back, it has a good support to it. You also have the lumbar support for the driver. That's gonna take me to some pros and cons and starting with the pros. On the exterior, the windows don't look as wide and tall as they are inside. So it has more of a sleek, sporty style and yet you have plenty of visibility in the interior cabin. Before we get back, let's give her a little go. 
maneuverability is good you can get in and out of lanes the steering wheel is soft when you get the leather wrap some other pros is there's plenty of storage found throughout especially in the center cluster that was redone the con is there's no pass through but it's not something that's so major the biggest cons that i see or issues with the crv really goes into the features you have to go to the sport touring in order to get the honda link in order to get the bose sound system in which it would be nice to offer these things as options and even on the screens you get a standard seven inch screen seven inch digital gauge cluster getting the nine inch is still small i'm not a huge fan of how it pops out of the dash it would have synchronized a little bit better where the climate control settings is but i do like the civic styling that they put in the interior turn radius at a stop point going to get right at two lanes let's rock and roll the biggest pro with this vehicle is active noise cancel standard and the great mpgs that you get because when you're looking at an SUV or a CUV, nowadays, most of them are getting around 20 MPGs. You're getting 40. So if you're doing a daily commute, it is great. Going up onto the interstate, it does get a little bit more noisy where the sound cancelization would come into play a little bit more so, but it is more soundproof than the turbocharged variant. Another con would be that I wish they would do like the 2.0 liter turbocharge that was found in the Accord that they discontinued in 2022 because if you put that underneath here with the sport trim I think it would just give a perfect recipe for fitting the name and the characteristics from the exterior design going into the rivals whether it's Toyota Mazda or Hyundai the styling of this is practical for everyday use it has a wide profile it's not over the top in length and if you're looking for something that's kind of a sweet spot and more of a discount you would go into the hrv which they have extended the link to that which is almost the same size as this but you're going to get a little bit more amenities when you get into the crv the only other con that i could see is in the gauge cluster you cannot go into the settings while you're driving and not getting wireless apple carplay or android auto you have to go into the exl hybrid which for me i feel that's the sweet spot but i would definitely tick the box for this urban gray exterior but let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing check out the next video merchandise website and instagram leave a comment and a like and i'd like to thank regal honda for giving us this 2024 honda crv sport hybrid for our car review